Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to take a look at why you should never model with a subdivision modifier active. This is something I've seen quite a lot in the Blender community where people are modeling with the subdivision modifier active. And it might look like a good way of doing it, but we're going to talk about some of the massive issues this causes. Let's look at this character here, which is something super quick I just whipped up. Don't judge me for, for this. <laughs> It's beautiful. So let, let me show you what I mean by this. So now we're just modeling with the modifier active and you can see that it's incredibly low poly and we can actually get a lot of shape down. And if you just were to, you know, move this around, you can very quickly get a, come up with really interesting concepts and you can just, just move stuff around and it looks, it looks fine. You can extrude stuff. We want to give this guy some new horns. We can, we can do that. We can select like this and we can extrude up and scale down and extrude up and all that. We can add some loops to it. So this might look like a pretty viable way because it's incredibly fast. But the problem with this is that you are borrowing happiness from your future self when you do this. If we were to actually look into edit mode for this, so we can see what's actually going on, you can see that this is an ungodly mess. And if this here was a dog, it will be put down. <laughs> this here is just really really awful. Again, it looks fine in sub D mode. But here it looks absolutely awful. And you can't use this for anything. Let's say you want to rig this character up or you, you really want to use it for for like you want to UV map it and you want to texture it up, you can't do it. There is just no connection, almost no connection between the actual polygonal view and the subdivided result. Yeah, it's quite a, a quite a drastic difference. Obviously, you know, it's a pretty extreme case here, but it's it's something that we've stumbled across quite a bit and and it was an interesting challenge to for us to think about. You know, this is this is the way not this way, like not sub modeling with sub these, but modeling without sub these is the way we've been doing it for the past I I don't even know forever. 10, 15 years or so. And in production you, you, I don't think I've ever actually come across anyone, I, I, at least not that I've worked with, that I've worked with a subdivision modifier constantly on. Yeah, yeah people might go between it. They yeah. might model some width and then and then enable it and then to just to preview it, and but then they go back to polygonal mode to model it like this because this way you're controlling the polygons. And and that is that is the workflow that I would suggest. You know, that's that's how we've been doing it. That's how most people do it is going in and out between subdivision mode and just straight up raw polys. But your primary focus should be on the non-subdivided mesh. The reason for this is that you want a preview that, uh, that is as, as true to your current mesh as possible. And the problem with modeling with subdivision modifier on is that it gives you this false sense of confidence. And it, it shows you things how they aren't really, how they don't, how they're not really looking, you know. So then some people might go into this and then they'll, they'll apply the subdivision surface modifier to then subdivide their model to then get more resolution. But this just uh, makes the issue even worse because now you model something based on something that was super low res and you're not necessarily in a spot now where things are in where they're supposed to be. Yeah, and in this case, it's incredibly hard to actually to, to actually change anything. You don't control your mesh now at all. Yeah, so hugely problematic. So how, how, would you, how would you work with this? Let's say you now, you're now going into regular edit mode and you're just moving this around and now you need to, you need to get the shape in you had before. Well, you just start to add more polygons to it. You, this, is, this model here is just criminally low poly. <laughs> like you would never work with something this low poly. Maybe when you're blocking in a base or something, but you wouldn't have a nose be this low poly. You would go in and you would add resolution to this so that you can actually get the shapes in there. And of course, you know, you're creating tons of problems here when it comes to polygons or to end guns and stuff, but you would go in and fix that later on. Yeah, that issue right there, like that lower vert that we just pulled up, that that creates an issue where when you have four like we have four vertices on one one face if one dips below then you you create this sort of weird it's not like it's not a really messed up polygon 
um, and it doesn't look messed up once you subdivide it but the normal and the way that the light sort of like reflects off of it can just make it look kind of weird and these are the kinds of issues that you don't really pick up on if you're modeling with sub d on so the good way of doing it and i would say the correct way of doing it is you model like this you model in edit mode you start doing your cuts you you move stuff around however you want to and then you preview this with a subdivision. Now you can see that the shape is far more, uh, it's far more similar than what we had before. And this area here is, you know, it's kinda starting to get there. Uh, you really want to just go between this. So let's show an actual, like a practical example of this as well, and not just- Your amazing model. <laughs> just not my amazing <laughs> model. Let's look at this. So uh, here we have, uh, we have two models. Uh, we have a little monster who is giving Suzanne a, a slightly inappropriate hug. So here, we, they're, they both have subdivision modifiers on it, and there is no intersection whatsoever. And this works fine. You know, you're, you're, you're moving the, these things around, and uh, they're not touching each other. But if you're doing modeling like this, you're not seeing the same as what an animator is seeing. An animator would never ever animate with a subdivision active like this. So what they're seeing is this. So now you can see a lot of intersection going on here, which will just cause all sorts of issues because you are never going to see these issues until you're rendering. So now you might have spent a week rendering a shot and now you can see that's, uh oh, you are now intersecting. The monkey is now intersecting the chest of this guy. Uh, this, in this case, maybe it's fine because of the angle or whatever it might be, but a very real case or very real problem is if you were to see where it intersects with the ground. If we go, if we go into a disabled modifier, we can see that this now basically perfectly is aligned to the floor. So no problem whatsoever here, because you know it's it's on the floor. No, really, no intersection or anything. But the moment we enable the modifier, now it's floating, and you you can easily see this with the moment you have any kind of lights enabled, where you're just going to see all sorts of issues in this case. So. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to model without the subdivision. Yeah, you, you have examples where animators have animated something where the shape doesn't actually match entirely what, what you see when you're modeling and what they see when they're animating. Now, all of a sudden, their, their, their interaction, their animation doesn't actually align with your model anymore. Maybe they're further away from the object that they're supposed to hold. Maybe they aren't actually running on the ground. They're floating a little bit off of the ground because they were provided with a model that was modeled in sub D mode, but didn't really take anything else into account. And oh my Lord, the issues that causes down the line. Now you have to re-render everything. You're gonna have to repost all the things. Maybe there is effects, which has been done on top of this as well. So you gotta basically redo the entire thing just because you were a sloppy modeler. <laughs> So huge problems. It's also gonna mean that rigging is gonna be harder as well because they don't really know exactly where the points are. Yeah, and you don't and you don't necessarily want that like low cage and then subdivide and then you like you preview your subdivision and think that's fine. You have to think of more things in the pipeline, like rigging, like texturing, how you lay out your UVs. So having a a cage or like your low res mesh that's not subdivided, the important thing for that is that it stays true to what the subdivided subdivided model will look like. That's your that's your goal really, is to make those two models look as similar as you can. So how do you know what resolution you should be working on that? Well, in this case, we can see our monkey is too low res. And we know this because the moment we add a single subdivision, it shrinks a lot and the shape drastically changes. So in this case, I would have probably applied this to it and work with a subdivision like this. Now, if you were to smooth this even further, you can see that the shrinkage is minimal. Of course, there is always some, but th this doesn't this doesn't have a huge impact on it. So I, I really wouldn't model stuff like this, this low poly, unless you, you have polygon restrictions. Yeah, maybe it's for games or something, yeah. or mobile games, but then you wouldn't be subdividing it anyway. So then yeah. that would be fine. You invented a time machine, went back to <laughs> 1994. And let's look at some correct ways of doing this. Here we have um, two retopologized models. And if we were to go into edit mode now, 
you can see that the polygons are all very tight, very evenly spaced, and also a lot more dense than uh, Suzanne and the other example we showed you right in the beginning. So if we were not go into go between edit mode and um, an object mode, we've now set it so that when we toggle now, we disable these two. So it toggles now we, we just enable the modifier. So, and you can basically not really see any difference. If you if we were to go far away, you, you almost can't see that anything is happening. And this is because the model, the underlying mesh here is so is so close. You can of course see it if you were to go crazy close like this. And now you can see the individual polys. Uh, but even so, it goes from here to here. It's really not a huge deal. Yeah, the shrinkage is is very minimal, and that you know obviously the higher resolution your 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 mesh is, the less it's it's going to shrink. So you have to find that balance of whatever you're working with, that you reach that level where you have minimal shrinkage when you're subdividing. But if you're subdividing anyway, then you're probably in a production environment where you know maybe they get sent off to sculpting so you'll have to have a cage that sort of matches the high res anyway so you'll probably be working with a fairly high res mesh so if you know how do you know it's too high well that is if you do something like this and you apply this is too heavy now now this is just unnecessarily heavy because the, the what, what was there before was was working fine so it's essentially find the lowest level which supports the shape and and then don't go too low like in the beginning and don't go too high like in this example where this is applied to. Yeah, one of the issues here is that if it's too high like this example here now is that you won't actually be able to easily modify it anymore. It's really hard because now you have four times the amount of, of, of faces to, to modify basically. If you need to change the shape a little bit, you want to tweak how the eyes look or, or whatever it might be. Yes, yeah, so if you just want to go in here and just like to tweak something or, you know, add some more loops, this is not very hard. But if, if we're dealing with if we're dealing with like this subdivision level, now it's it's very, very tricky to change anything. And you could of course, you know, you have your proportional fall off or self selection if you're in Maya, and then you can tweak things around, but generally it's not a very good practice. Now this is the kind of model, you know, a subdivided model that you would probably send over to ZBrush for, for sculpting, because then again, we have minimal shrinking once we subdivide it, which, which helps that transition between animation effects and, and ZBrush. And how much information should you put into your wireframe or into your topology? And I think this here is a good level. Here you can see the major shapes are in topology. There is no sculpting on this whatsoever. Everything we're seeing here is just raw polygons. And this just means that, let's say you, you want to you want to spawn some effects from these things, you can easily do that. Or you can just do, you can just have more control over them if you want to expand or contract these guys in uh, in rigging, for instance, if you want to have some control. <laughs> he's, he's breathing, <laughs> he's from, breathing from, from, <laughs> from, his, from his points here. So then it's really important to have these into topology. And it becomes very hard to do this if you are working in subdivision or if, you, if you're not working in subdivision because you just don't have enough control over anything here. Yeah, I would say if you, if you just go back to the Mass Effect alien there again and unsubdivide them, look at the, the top holes in his head. You know, there's there's only four sides to them. Now, this was kind of like a judgment call because I really didn't want to add more topology to them. I would say that maybe these ones, they you could make the argument that, okay, maybe you add like six sides instead of only four, right? But for my purpose here, for what I needed, I the subdivision was was holding up once you subdivided it it still held the detail it still looks kind of nice so for this case it worked out but maybe most of the time having four sides for a hole is just on the low end you probably want like minimum six but uh maybe around eight that's just a small side note <laughs> yeah we could talk about the for, <laughs> yeah. for ages here but at least the main point here is that uh, if you work in subdivision mode it's it it's deceptive it looks like you are getting it looks like you have more control than you do and it causes all sorts of issues you can't essentially uv map it which means you can't really texture it properly you rigging is going to be absolutely impossible and if you were to give this to somebody if you were to give this model to somebody else to work with in a, in any kind of production if it's a freelance gig or as a student thing whatever it might be they are going to send it back and say that it's it's completely unusable now again i want i want to highlight here that this doesn't mean that 
we never look at the subdivider model, right? This is purely about modeling and relying on subdivisions to to support your mesh and make that high res without actually having the underlying topology be be nice. You know that that the whole matter about this is that you shouldn't rely on the subdivisions. Your mesh should be fairly comparable to when you subdivided. So tabbing in and out between subdivision mode and non-subdivided mode, like that is a really good workflow because that way you see, okay, what does the final model look like? But your underlying mesh still has to support the subdivided detail level. Yeah, you constantly go back and forth between these two. Uh, any any model at worth anything would, would always would always do that because you need to preview it as well. If you don't preview it, then you don't know what it's going to look like actually in subdivision mode. You can't just magically know what it's going to look like. So it's it's really important to 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 use it as well. Just don't end up in cases where you have you have it looks fine in subd and it looks absolutely broken in uh, in uh, topology. So yeah, we're going to be doing more of these uh, more of these modeling videos as we go along. Let us know what modeling issues you have in the comments and make sure to like, comment and subscribe and also turn on notifications as well. And if you have any sort of questions that you might be curious about re related to any kind of pipeline or production workflow, that's kind of what we're hoping to to bring to this community as well bring some of our experience to to you guys that we have in the field. So if you have any specific questions that, that you've been thinking about, just please let us know and we'd be happy to answer that. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.